A few years ago, the musical Wicked debuted to much acclaim on Broadway, and it's since gone on to become one of the most successful shows in recent Broadway history. Now, you can imagine why it was compelling. It took a very familiar story, The Wizard of Oz, a movie that, if we haven't seen it all, maybe we've seen bits and pieces of it as it's run on TV over the years, but a movie that we understand the plot to. We know who the good guys are and who the bad guys are, but it took the characters from that story and it told a story from the perspective of the Wicked Witch. And seeing it through her eyes gave a whole different perspective on all the events that took place. And so it was really compelling. Uh, you'll notice that in a lot of the stories that we tell, it can be very compelling if we look at it from a different character's perspective. So for Harry Potter fans, it would be Severus Snape. Or for Western fans and the man who shot Liberty Valance, it would be Tom Donovan. You think you know the way things worked out, but then you see it from additional perspectives. You get some additional information, and that changes everything. Sometimes that can happen in real life. Have you ever had a relationship, a friendship with someone, and then you find out something new about them and your entire perspective, your whole thought process about them changes? That can happen in people that we know, and it can happen in Scripture. When we get to the New Testament, right after the Gospels that tell about Jesus' life, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we enter into the book of Acts. And what Acts tells us about is what happened when people started preaching about Jesus and the church had begun. And when we get to Acts 6 and 7, the message of Jesus has been spreading. And so there were some who disagreed very strongly with Jesus' message. They were Jewish leaders. They were Pharisees, teachers of the law, people who were very determined to keep what they knew of as the law of Moses. Jesus had come to fulfill that, but they weren't convinced at all that that was true. And so they were trying to find people who were preaching about Jesus and challenging them, questioning them. And as we see in Acts 6 and 7, it went beyond questioning, even to death. And so they're serious about this, and they're encountering a man named Stephen. Stephen is described in Scripture as someone who is serving Jesus, who is full of good works, and has a very compelling story to share. And so what happens in these chapters is Stephen stands up and he starts telling the story that the Jewish leaders had known their entire lives. They would have grown up hearing about Abraham and Moses and David. They knew who these people were and they knew what things had happened. And so as Stephen starts to tell this story, he's talking about familiar people. He's talking about familiar events. But then he says something that's very challenging to them. He tells them that they're following in the long line of people before them who had rejected the prophets that God sent them. You see, here's the challenge that they were facing. They had seen themselves as the heroes of their own story. In fact, when we read about what takes place in Acts 6 and 7, we're introduced to another young man, a young man named Saul of Tarsus. Now Saul is there and they're laying the coats at Saul's feet when they go to stone Stephen, to pick up large rocks and to hurl them at Stephen literally until he's dead. Saul is there. Saul will go on to become Paul. He'll go on from being an up-and-coming Jewish uh, leader to a leader for the Christian movement, preaching about Jesus. And see, they saw themselves the same way Saul of Tarsus saw himself. He was a hero in his own story. He was standing up for what was right. They were accusing Stephen of saying things that were blasphemy. They were, they were speaking against these laws and traditions that they'd kept. In fact, Acts chapter 6 tells us that they even secretly convinced other people to say things about Stephen that says he spoke against Moses and God. And so they were really unable to cope with the wisdom that Stephen was sharing. Stephen showed them who they really were. They saw themselves as the heroes of their own story. But when Stephen told the story, like Jesus often did, he began in a way that they might not have expected. He started with the story of Israel, again, events they would have rehearsed their entire lives. But he tells the story with a surprise reveal at the end. 
He describes Israel resisting the will of God, and he tells the Jews, you haven't been protectors of God's will. In fact, you've been doing just the opposite. You're in a long line of Israelites who have rejected prophets that God sent and who have resisted what God wanted them to do. Now, this would have really caught them off guard. It would be like watching a movie and you have kind of a surprise twist ending at the end. They didn't expect that. And so they're shocked at this bold move. And then it's interesting to see the way he's described here. Uh, they were watching him in Acts 6, 15, and they saw his face like the face of an angel. It kind of reminds us of the way Moses, a person they would have been very familiar with, had his face glowing after an encounter with God. They saw themselves as the hero of their own story, and Stephen told them who they really were. Now think about our own lives for a minute. We typically see ourselves as the heroes of our own story. We're the main character in our own story. Have you ever stopped to think about the fact that for other people you know, in their minds, and their story, they're the main characters, and you're just part of the supporting cast? You know, you're sort of an additional character to their main character. We all tend to see ourselves as the one in the spotlight. That's how we view things. When we, something happens, we think, how does this affect me? We might even hear about a tragedy that takes place. And even if we don't want to admit it to ourselves, one of the first thoughts we have is, okay, but how does this affect me? How is this going to change my life? And so even with this tendency, we have these reminders all the time that we are not the main characters. Not too long ago, my family was able to visit the Grand Canyon. Maybe you've been there before. If you've seen pictures, it's impressive to view them in pictures, but it doesn't do justice to the immense sight of standing over the Grand Canyon. It's hard to explain how you feel. To me, standing in front of the Grand Canyon is one of those reminders that I'm not the main character in my own story. Because when I see the majesty of creation displayed around me, it's really easy to see that the world is much bigger than my little bubble that I live in. Maybe there's a place like that for you. Maybe it's in the mountains. Maybe it's while you're out fishing in nature. Whatever it is, a reminder that you're not the main center of attention. Scripture helps us see ourselves for who we really are. In fact, Psalm 8 uh, depicts the psalmist looking at the stars, and the stars leave him wondering to God, What is man that you are mindful of him? Why would you care about me? Passages of scripture like that keep us in check. It gives us perspective. God is the author of scripture, and he makes it clear that the story we should be involved in is not our story, but his story. We're all participants in his story. It doesn't revolve around us. It revolves around him. He's the one writing it. We're not the mistreated main characters. We're not the naturally good heroes. We're the sinners who have allowed a chasm larger than the Grand Canyon to separate us from God. That means God has to act to traverse that distance, and he does. That is the story of Scripture. That's the story we're part of. Sometimes it's hard for us to adjust to the new story. Sometimes we react the way the Jewish leaders reacted when Stephen told them, no, this is how you've been acting. We don't like the sound of it. It hurts us to think about that. But it's vitally important that when I read Scripture, I'm reminded it's not about my story, but about God's story. Now, the good news of Scripture is I have a place in that story. God doesn't set up on the board a cast list of everybody who's been invited to the story, and there are a few names left off. All of us are invited to be part of God's story. We just have to choose what we want to do. Do we want to see ourselves as the main characters? Or are we willing to participate in the larger story that God is writing in the lives of all of his people? I think that as we view both of those side by side, we're able to see which one is better, which perspective is more satisfying, and which story we want to be a part of. Sometimes it just takes a change of perspective to understand the story that really matters.